saved to overcome the limits that others put on you. You were saved to overcome the limits that others put on you. It's right there in the text. Here it is in 1 Samuel 17, and we're looking. David was the youngest of Jesse's sons. When God said, I want you to go to the house of Jesse, and I'm going to show you the one who will be the next king, Saul has acted up. Saul has not done what I told him to do. i got to get rid of Saul, and I'm going to anoint the new king who's going to be king of Israel. He's one of Jesse's sons. I want you to go, and I want you to anoint the one that I show you. And here it is that Samuel goes, and he goes to Jesse's house, and he tells him what God has said, and he helps him understand that God said one of your sons is going to be the new king. And the oldest son shows up first, and the text tells us that he's tall and he's handsome. And Samuel looks at him, and he said, oh, that must be the one. And God says, uh-uh, that's not him. He said, you too busy looking on the outside, and I'm looking on the inside. You, you looking at outward appearances, that's your problem now. That's why it's going on with Goliath now. You looking at how tall Goliath is instead of how tall God is. You looking at how big that Goliath javelin is instead of wondering how powerful God is in your life. And so he starts to go through the first son, no, the second son, no, the third son. And he goes on, he says, well, that's all the sons I have right here. And God still hasn't said, he says, well, do you have any other sons? And he tells him, well, I'm not. But, I got one more son, but he's the conjunction, but he ain't that big. I got one more son, but he ain't that old. I got one more son, but he ain't no warrior. I got one more son, but he don't look that powerful. I got one more son, but he's out in the field taking care of our sheep, because that's all we think he can do. Samuel calls him and he says, listen, we will not eat until you bring that son in there. You know they have to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> because when he said there will be no dinner until you get that boy in, they went, well, go get him right now. But here comes David, he shows up. David, and they don't know about what David has been doing. We're eventually going to find out. They don't know how David has been fighting against the lion. They don't know how David's been fighting against the bear. Because nobody's paying David any attention. And he shows up, and his own daddy doesn't show him any value. His daddy puts a limit on him, saying, But he's just a shepherd boy. He puts a limit on him. We see later when he shows up at the fight, his brothers, they put a limit on him, saying, What are you doing here? You can't just be nosy. And sometimes you got to understand. Trying to put on you that they won't wear themselves. It was Saul's arm. 
Why this saw we? It's your fault. It's your shield. This is your covering. Why you trying to give me what you have? There are folks who always try to give you what they won't wear themselves. Come on now, make it plain. David takes it. He says, I can't wear this. I haven't tested this. And, I, and, and, and this ain't mine anyway. I, I can't wear this. This is not what I do. This is not what God has given me. And, and when everybody saw a shepherd boy, God saw a warrior. When everybody saw an egg, God saw an eagle in the air. People, you got to understand that, that you were saved to overcome the limits that others put on you. And here's the last thing. Not only you were saved to overcome the limits that others put on you, you were over you were saved to overcome the giants around you. Not just the limits that others put on you, but you were saved to overcome the giants around you. Here's the thing why it's in that order, because until you are able to overcome the limitations that others put on you, you will never be prepared and ready to fight the giants around you. So God has to take David. David has to go through his testing. He has to go through a season. And if you honest with yourself, the reason you overcome some giants in your life, because you had to overcome some no other issues that happened in your life. You had to overcome the doubts that people put on you, the doubts that others had around you. And it's until you start to believe who God is in your life, God knew you weren't ready to face the big challenges that came your way. David had to deal with those who doubted who he could be so he could now be the fighter to defeat the one who didn't know who he had become. Here it is that he's now and overcoming God's sight. He tells Saul, I got this. I don't need your armor. And God saw him as an overcomer. And God had a word of power that he had given to David. And David goes out and when he faces Goliath, here's Goliath. Goliath comes against him with human power. He says, I'm going to come against you with human power. I'm going to come against you with I got it and what I can make in my head. I'm going to come against you only what I can see. I have this javelin. Somebody made this javelin. I saw them make this javelin. I'm going to come against you with this sword. Somebody made this sword. I can hold this sword. And I'm going to come against you with this shield. But David said, you try to come against me with metal and wood. And I'm going to come against you with a mighty word. Because the mighty word that I have comes from God. And if God gives me the fight and if God Come against me with it, it ain't gonna be nothing to make to God. Amen. Amen. Israel's army is scared, but David is unshaken. Why? Because he's not relying on what somebody else told him. He was lying on what God had sent him. He was lying on what God had given to him. And so he tells him, Don't lose heart. I got this. I got this. Because God has taken me through some smaller battles. I can win this war because I've been through some battles. And sometimes we got to be reminded that the battle you face in there, you've had other battles before. God's brought you through battles time and time again. You ain't got to worry about this battle. You don't got to be scared of this battle. Because if you remember what God has done in your life, he's brought you through many times before. And God is not the one to bring you this far to leave you just this far. Here it is then. He now goes out and he has to face him. And, and just like God showed him that he's now empowered by God's word, by faith, because David has faith to believe that God is able to do what he said he would do, that when he faced the giants, he realized that Goliath around him could be beaten by standing on the word of God. What are you standing on today? Are you standing on your paycheck? Are you standing on your health? Are you standing on the house of possessions you have? Or are you standing on the word of God? Because all you got to do is ask the people in Mexico City, Florida. All you got to do is ask the people in Georgia and Alabama. All you got to do is ask the people in South Carolina and North Carolina if those possessions are the reason that they are standing here today. The only reason they are still alive is because of the power of God in their life. You may have lost your possessions, but you never lose your salvation. You may have lost your house, but you never lose the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords who can get you another one. Life and fear and giants can strip you of your hope in Christ if you let them. But the Bible reminds us that we are more than conquerors who have, who love this. That's why Paul, that's why he tells us, he says, listen, I want you to know not only am I more than a conqueror, I want to let you know that all the things that think they can try to scare, scare me and bully me and yell me down, fear and doubt, shame, pass and defeat, those things don't mean nothing to me. I'm more than a conqueror who him who loved us because I am convinced, I am persuaded, I know for sure that God has got this and no matter what comes against me, no matter Curse 
to say no. But it's having the faith to say yes. yes. To the limitless possibilities that God has for you in your life. That's why I love this text. Because it helps us to understand that, that David didn't face Goliath in his natural. But he faced it in God. And sometimes we don't reach where God wants us to be because we still look at man instead of looking at God. Amen. That's why he said that the world and the sickness, principalities, and powers will challenge us, but you are more than a conqueror. A well-placed stone of hope, a well-placed stone of love, a well-placed stone of prayer, a well-placed stone of belief is stronger than any Goliath that will try to come against us. So we got to take the limits off. We got to take the limits off and let God be God in our life. We got to take the limits off and let God shield us and give us and empower us so that we can come against the enemy with more than just a javelin, more than just a spear, more than just a shield. But we come against the enemy with the word of God. Listen, as David said, that I come against you with the true God of the armies of Israel, the one you have insulted, the one with word and with power. You are trying to insult my God, but here's the thing. But what God will do is when God calls me to the battle, I got faith enough to know that if God calls me to the battle, if God calls me to the war, if God puts me in the trenches, as long as I stand on the word of God, I will not only win, I will win. So you got to say yes to God's word. You got to say, Lord, take the limits off. We sang about it earlier. You got to say, Lord, take the limits off of my faith that I can do all things through you. Lord, take the limits off of my belief. Take the limits off of my hope. Look what God has done through my Bible Baptist Church. How many times did the naysayers say you would never be where you are? How many times did they say you'd never get off telegraph road and look at God? If it's a job, 
If it's a ministry opportunity, if it's a service opportunity, take the limits off yourself. Take the limits off of what others are trying to put on you. And take the limits that the giants and the Goliaths are trying to put on you. Because you serve a God who has no limits. And if God has made the promise, trust his word. And he will bring you to victory. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm taking the limits off. Come on, give God some praise. Yourself to how much you think God can love you. God can't love a broken heart. 